Get yourself a cup of tea because we have 25 things to go through. So I think there's a common misconception that when you try to be more eco-friendly or when you try to be more sustainable, then you end up spending more money and it's going to cost you a load of money. So it's completely just not something that you're able to do. When actually the reality is the opposite. A lot of things that are eco-friendly actually save you money as well and they kind of go hand in hand. So I wanted to share those things with you. I have 25 of them, so I'm not gonna talk any more here and let's get straight into them. So, many years to so number one is to give up bottled water. Not only is bottled water ridiculously expensive, but also the amount of plastic that is used is through the roof. Marketing has unfortunately led us to believe that we need to be drinking bottled water because it's safer and it's healthier for us. When tap water is still drinking water, if you're worried about drinking from the tap, then you can get a water filter or a water distiller at home and then just use your own reusable water bottle when you're out and about. So my second tip is to switch to a 100% green energy provider. So I am working on this video with Octopus Energy and they provide 100% green electricity. They also shared with me a lot of the tips on this list because they are the experts. So as a company, they've won awards for their customer service. They've been voted supplier of the year and which have said that Octopus Energy is the only supplier that they would recommend. And they can completely smash the myth that green energy is more expensive because if you switch to Octopus Energy, you will save up to 240 pounds compared to suppliers like British Gas, E.ON and N-Power. As a brand, they're just all around great and I've fallen in love with them because they do things like organising planting trees at schools and arranging showings for the documentary Inconvenient Truth so that more people can be made aware about global warming. And the best thing is it's all very easy. It might seem like a complex thing to switch your energy supply, but it's actually super simple. You can get a quote and sign up on their website in under two minutes and they can do the rest for you. So I'll leave a link to it down below so you can get all the information that you need it really is a very simple switch and it saves you a lot of money whilst also doing a really good thing for the environment. Number three is to turn it off. When your device is fully charged, unplug it. When the TV isn't being used, switch it off at the plug. Don't just put it on standby. Or when you're leaving a room, make sure you're switching off the lights. These are small little things that sometimes we forget to do, but they can add up and make a big difference over time. Number four is to recharge. Invest in a set of rechargeable batteries for things like your controllers, your remotes, your gadgets or your smoke detectors. It's one of the best things that we've done and it just means that you're not having to constantly be buying new batteries that will end up in landfill. Number five is to go digital. Save trees and save money. You can make really simple switches like online banking, saving all of your files on a hard drive, using streaming sites like Netflix, Spotify, Audible, or getting email subscriptions rather than paper ones. These are all very simple things that can actually make a big difference over time. And this will also save you money in the long run because banks now often are charging for paper banking and it saves you having to buy physical items like DVDs, books, and paper that will end up in landfill. Number six is to cold wash. You don't actually need to wash your clothes in hot water in order for them to get clean. There are lots of laundry detergent brands now that are advising you to switch to a lower temperature when you wash your clothes and it will save your money as well. You won't have as high bills for all the hot water while you're also doing a favour for the environment. Number seven is to cycle or walk. If you are close enough to your workplace or your school, why not try walking there or cycling there? You're not only gonna save money on the costs of transportation, but you're also gonna save on the vehicle emissions, as well as the fact that you'll be getting outside and exercising all at the same time. It's just a win-win situation. Number eight is to eat less meat. As a vegan, I know that when I made the switch to eating no meat anymore, my food bill went down dramatically. Meat is very expensive and it's also very damaging to the environment. In fact, reducing your meat consumption can be one of the most dramatic changes you can make to your carbon footprint. And I'm not saying you have to go vegan overnight or go vegetarian overnight. Just start incorporating more vegan and vegetarian meals during the week so you're eating less meat overall. Number nine is seasonal fruit and veg. So when you're going to get your ingredients for your vegan and vegetarian meals that you're gonna be enjoying now, 
try and pick seasonal fruits and vegetables to put into those meals. Buying in season just means that you're purchasing foods that are at the peak of their supply. It therefore costs less for the farmer to harvest and also less time and less distance for the food to make it to your supermarket or your local shop. Number 10 is to bring your own bag. In the UK, I'm so happy that they've started to charge for plastic bags. It's been a year or two now, can't remember how long ago it was, but it's a really great incentive to make sure everyone's bringing their bags and it's gonna save you money because you're not gonna have to pay 10p every single time you go to the supermarket and you don't have your bag with you. Less plastic bag usage means less plastic in landfills and less plastic in the ocean, which means less harm on animals, on sea life, and on our environment in general. Number 11 is to install a sink water aerator. Octopus Energy advised me of this tip and it's an amazing one because it reduces heavily the amount of water that's coming out of your taps. So all it does is it reduces the amount of water by filling it with some air. On an old fashioned tap, up to 15 liters of water can come out in just one minute. When I read that, that blew my mind. But with the sink water aerator, you can reduce that to around six liters a minute, which is such a big dramatic change and it really puts things into perspective. So definitely consider doing that. You'll reduce on your water bill, also on your hot water, as well as helping the environment because you're not using as much water overall. Number 12 is to use a drying rack to dry your clothes. In the UK, this really is the norm. Most people dry their clothes on a drying rack. But I know elsewhere, maybe in the US, a lot more people use dryers or tumble dryers to dry their clothes typically. So get a clothing rack or clothing line for outside and you will end up saving a lot of money because tumble dryers are really expensive to run and they also use up a lot of energy. So number 13 is to take less showers. I think there's a common misconception that you should be showering every day and you should be having long showers every day, washing yourself really thoroughly when actually it's not really that good for your skin to do that. You should give your skin a break because you're just washing off all of its natural oils constantly. I have one long shower a week and I also have shorter showers in between. So when I get back from the gym, I will just tie my hair up and have a really quick shower, like three to five minute shower and I'm good to go. So rethink if you're having really long showers, wash your hair less, try and have quick jumping out showers and maybe on some days when you're not doing a lot, just don't take a shower at all and just bask in your grossness, although I don't think it's very gross. I probably shower five times a week. Don't know, if that makes me gross, so be it. I've said it before and I'll say it again, think before you buy. The less you buy, the less you consume, the less money you spend, of course, but also the less impact you will have on the environment. And we really don't need everything that the media convinces us we do need. So just think twice if you're having a little bit of an urge to do a bit of online shopping late at night, close the laptop, have a think, sleep on it, and you know, reevaluate things tomorrow. So this leads me on to number 15, which is to buy secondhand. So if you do need to buy something, then try and get it secondhand first. Most of my wardrobe is from charity shops and I've thrifted it. Similarly with my furniture, most of it's secondhand. And I also really do try to look for things like electronics, like my camera. I try and get those secondhand if I can. It's a great way to save a lot of money, as well as getting really high quality things, often things from charity shops and secondhand furniture is way higher quality than if you were to get a same similar thing of a similar price new. Because one man's trash or one person's trash is another person's treasure. And there's enough trash on this planet to go around for everybody. Number 16 is to borrow before buying. So even before buying something secondhand, see if you can borrow it. If you have a wedding coming up and you don't have a dress for it, see if you can borrow a friend's dress. If you have a book that you really wanna read, ask around to see if anyone you know has a copy. You don't necessarily need to go home and buy it yourself. You're gonna save money and you're also just gonna be environmentally friendly. Number 17 is to recycle or sell your things. So when you're buying secondhand and you're borrowing things from your friends, think about doing the same with your things. Think about selling old furniture, old clothes, or recycling them when you don't need them anymore. And I also think it's great to donate to charity shops because it's going to a good cause. Number 18 is to make your own cleaning products. Commercial cleaning products are full of harmful, toxic, and just totally unnecessary chemicals that you just don't need in your home. So why not make your own? They're actually quite easy to make. I'm gonna be doing a video very, very soon 
all on cleaning products and how to make your own, so stay tuned for that. Number 19 is to replace your light bulbs with energy saving light bulbs. Yes, they are more expensive when you buy them compared to normal light bulbs, but that is because they last a lot longer, they use up a lot less energy, and therefore they will save you money because your light bulbs won't be using as much energy. So they're a really good switch to make. Number 20 is to ditch paper towels. I've honestly never used paper towels ever since I've moved out of my parents' home because I think they're completely unnecessary and also they cost money. It's just pointless when you have a cloth, you can use that to wipe up everything. So get rid of the paper towels. Number 21 is to compost your food. You can compost your food whether you have a garden or not, but in particular, if you do have a garden, it will save you money on buying fertilizers and compost. And if you didn't know already, if you put your food in the bin, it doesn't compost when it goes to landfill because the air can't get to it. So number 22 is to cook from scratch. You all know I'm a huge advocate of this because I have hundreds of recipes on this channel and on my website, but cooking from scratch is an amazing way to save so much money. When you eat out, when you order takeaway, when you buy prepackaged foods, processed foods, they are so much more expensive than when you buy whole foods and when you cook from home. Also, when you cook from home, you'll be using so much less plastic packaging, so much less waste, and it's so much more energy efficient. Plus, your body will thank you for it. Number 23 is to get a library card. Like I said earlier, borrowing things is a great way to be more environmentally aware and getting a library card means that you can borrow their books, you can use their facilities, you can use their space to use their internet, to work. It's just an all round great energy saving and money saving thing to do. Number 24 is to fix it. We live in a throwaway culture, a disposable culture. The second something breaks, we throw it out and we get a new one. It's clear why this is bad for the planet, but also it's just really expensive. If something breaks, take it to the place you've got it, ask them if they can fix it or they can help you with it, get a new part for it. And if you rip your trousers, if a button falls off, sew it up. And number 25 is to install a programmable thermostat, or if you don't have that and you can't do that, just set a timer for your heating and your hot water. Too often, we'll switch the heating on when we're cold or just whack the hot water on, and we leave it on for a bit longer than we meant to, but it's way more energy efficient and it will save you money if you set your heating and hot water on for certain times of the day. So for example, when you get back home for work or when you wake up in the morning, you set it for that time, the heating goes on, the hot water goes on, and then you're set. You don't have to be constantly switching on and off and using too much of it and then being surprised by your bill at the end of the month. This is a really easy switch, but it makes a big difference. So that is it, that is all my tips. If you have any more, I'd love to hear them so we can all help each other out, save some money, while also helping our planet together. Also, definitely check out Octopus Energy down below. I think it's an amazing thing to do. It makes me feel so much better that everything in my home is being powered off of renewable green energy, and you can do the same and it will save you money in the long run. So yeah, definitely check it out. Everything's linked below, all the information is there. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.